Okay, so this is a, a great start, I guess. Um, it looks like a, a pixelated tapeworm going after, I don't know, some spaceship thing. But let's um, let's let's close this, and and you can save it if you want. It's a masterpiece. I'm not going to save this. And let's open um, a new, or let's create a new new flash file from the get-go. So we're going to go back to create new. If it's not here, what you can always do if the splash screen isn't on your computer, go to new and choose action script 3. One reason it's um, beneficial to go here is you can set up some things right away. Um, over here dealing with uh, stage size, they call it uh, stage because it's like a, a movie, right? You're creating a movie, so they don't call it an artboard, they call it a stage. But um, we're g we can do this in properties as well. So I'm going to hit action script 3, go OK, and we've got this stage. Now, one thing you have to think about immediately is, is aspect ratio and, and stage size. Now, with mobile devices, some mobile devices that people might be viewing your, your, your masterpiece on might have really small stage sizes. Um, others might have, you know, be large, like 10 inches across. So what's really important is the aspect ratio. You know, what, what size do you want the map? Do you want black bars at the edges because people have uh, a landscape um, viewing device such as a high-definition television with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio? Or do you want kind of a 4-3 aspect ratio that like an iPad has? Um, these things, you know, by and large, we're not going to worry about with right now, but uh, when you want to change these things, I need to show you where. So whenever you have a stage and nothing is selected on it, so if, I'll just draw a box here. You don't have to do this. Um, I've got this box, and when I have the box selected over in Properties, it gives me options for the box itself, changing the stroke width, etc. However, if I deselect the box, what the Properties thing shows us are the properties of the stage itself. And here we can change a variety of things. The color of the stage, maybe we want um, a light gray stage color, which is hard to see with a, with a light gray background. Maybe a toxic blue. I'm going to keep that for a little while just to wake you up. Um, we can also change the size. We can just simply click and drag the stage size thing here. Maybe I want it 600 by 800. I can just click and drag this. This is insane. Doop, doop. All right. Oops. Oh, sorry. Hit a wrong button, as usual. It's going to happen a lot. And so now our stage is this size. You can also click on any time you see a little toolbar, you can click on that and change things. So in here, you can change that thing. We could actually change the size of our stage to the contents that we have. I'm going to do that now. And so now our stage is only as big as everything we have drawn, which is very small in this case, 112 pixels by 90 pixels. So you can shape things to... Whoa. Uh, you can shape things to what you've drawn. So a variety of options here. Another thing to discuss is frame rate. Frame rate is also here a property that you can affect on the stage. And um, 24 is generally an acceptable frame rate. That's what movies traditionally have been shown at, although... Recently, they're going to 48 uh, frames per second, which some people say looks terrible. So uh, generally, 12 is a little sluggish and a little choppy. I'm, I'm not an animation connoisseur. One thing you need to keep in mind is the higher the frame rate, the higher the processing power required on, on the computer's end, the, you know, the person that's viewing it. And after 24 frames per second, you really can't tell too much difference. Um, so 24 is a good, good standard to keep. All right. I will change the stage co stage color back to white. Perfect. Right. Now notice, I if I click once and drag this, it only moves that. And another weird thing about Flash that I didn't emphasize enough is these are called dumb graphics, or I call them dumb graphics. If I select this and move it again, notice that the background is gone. Anytime you overlap a dumb graphic over another dumb graphic and deselect it, and then select it again and move it, everything underneath, all the dumb graphics underneath are erased. So this is something that can be kind of annoying. Now, how can we get around this? I'm just going to show you. If I don't deselect it, it doesn't get erased. But as soon as I deselect and click again and select, it's gone. 
So how do we get around this? Well, there are a couple ways. First of all, you can always double click. One second, let me get rid of that. Remember, you can always add an outline again by selecting this ink bottle tool. So one way to get around that is to not click once, but always double click the fill of something so everything gets selected. Another option is to double click, go up to modify, uh, group, command G or control G on, in Windows machines. And then just like an illustrator, they're grouped. They're no longer dumb objects. But it's something to keep in mind. Um, and you're going to see a lot of grouped items. To manipulate these, you just double click into them. And then again, you want to be careful because now we have this silly grouped item. Okay. But this is not about, about playing with editing anymore. This is about bringing in a map so we can start to animate it or tweak it or add interactivity. So what we're going to do to do that is, first of all, you need an AI file. And with this tutorial, there should be an AI file called map with two Ps. Let's go to File, Import, and there are a couple ways you can import things into Flash. For novices to Flash, I always recommend it, particularly when you're importing maps, actually, no matter novice or not, importing to Stage. So let's select that. And then we need to find our AI map. Now, mine is kind of lost here, but it should be map.ai like this file here. Double click on it. And you'll get a dialog similar to this. It might be slightly different depending on what version you're using. And here what you see is every layer and every object really in the AI file displayed here in the um, import dialog. And there'll be some things that are incompatible. You can click on this text with an, a stroke applied. Okay, it might not be able to do that in Flash. Characters with horizontal scaling. Okay, I might not be able to import that. Um, I'm going to click Apply Recommended Import Settings so it does the next best thing, whatever that is. Um, there are certain things that don't totally correlate between Flash and Illustrator. All right, so what we have here are all of our layers from Illustrator. Thematic data, title and neat line stuff, street labels, building labels, a scale bar, building streets and sidewalks. Let's open this building streets and sidewalks up. And as you can see, we have um, some clipping paths. We have some buildings with their own clipping paths. In Illustrator, you'll often get these kind of nasty clipping paths, uh, particularly when you export from Adobe Illustrator, uh, from Esri ArcGIS, and then try to bring it in. So we want to import most of these layers. These layers that aren't checked are ones that were turned off in Illustrator, so they're probably okay to leave out, but we'll do that. And you actually don't need to bring in these clipping paths oftentimes. And I might be eating those words shortly, but even so, we can always fix it. So if you see clipping paths, I actually often recommend just getting rid of them. We can create our own clipping paths in Flash. So I'm going to open the streets now, get rid of the clipping path. Select all these streets, no worries. Um, this clipping path was turned off. Okay, clipping path turned off. Scale, all right. Bunch of different things. We're going to bring that in. Building labels, we want to bring in the labels. Street labels, we'll bring those in. Title and neat line, we'll bring that in. And then the thematic data. There isn't much thematic data on this, but we'll bring this stuff in. All right, now, uh, another thing you can do when you're importing is you can import objects that you want to provide interactivity to. It's a good idea to make them into what are called, it's over here, movie clips in Flash. So you can do that later by selecting them and, and hitting F8 on your keyboard. But since we're here organizing our map anyway, what you want to do is anything you think is going to need interactivity of any sort, and even if you end up not giving it interactivity, it's a great idea to make it um, a movie clip right now. So you always want to keep it in an editable path. A bitmap means it'll make it into a raster picture, and these are all vector files, so we want to keep them vector so we can tweak them in Flash. But down here you'll see Create Movie Clip, and you can give it an instance name. And I, this is getting a little bit ahead of myself, 
but you always want to give your movie clips instance names if you're going to add interactivity. So this is the one thematic data point I have on my map. I'm going to call it, um, the instance name is going to be incident, because it's like a fake anti-governor like rally or something. And here we have registration, which um, basically says where's the XY coordinate of this object. I generally like center registration. There's a good reason to use um, the upper left. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit center registration. So now when this map gets created, there's going to be this, this red diamond shape. It's going to be a movie clip, and it's going to have a name of incident. And as you'll see in action script, we can later on, we can when things have names, you have power over them. Kind of like wizards. If they have your name, they have power over you too. I've, I've read. Anyway, um, title text. I don't know um, if we really need to give any of this. This um, we don't need to give these any instance names. Um, street labels. Now, what you can do is create a movie clip out of an entire layer. Now, why would you want to do this? Why wouldn't you just give everything its own little movie clip name? Well, one thing you need to think about when you're adding interactivity, so I have the street labels layer highlighted right now. So one thing you need to think about is that, um, let's say we want to turn the street labels on and off. We want to create a button that turns these labels on and off. We don't want to have to write code that says turn 6th Street off, turn East Cascade Avenue off, turn East Cascade Avenue 1 off. We want to just say turn street labels off. <clears throat> by creating what's called a movie clip, and I know this is kind of vague to you right now, a movie clip is a group of items that you can control with script. So by selecting street labels and making that an, um, a movie clip, and maybe calling it street labels, um, what we can do is we can, we can create a button that says show street labels, hide street labels. So we're just going to do that. We're not going to make individual ones. When I click on the building labels layer, click create movie clip and do the same thing building labels notice I'm using camel case because when you're writing script and you need to call on these objects names it's good to be consistent I don't care if you capitalize every word etc but don't use spaces and always <coughs> be consistent so you can remember how you spelled things scale we'll give them an option to turn the scale bar on and off and building streets and sidewalks well that's our base map they can't we're not going to let them hide that. And thematic data, uh, we kind of did. T I guess title and neat line and stuff, we're going to make a movie clip out of all of that so people can turn the title on and off. So title, we'll call it. Give it a center registration. All right, one last thing before we're done for, with this short video. <clears throat> a couple things down here. You always want to convert your illustrator layers to flash layers. You can convert it to keyframes, which means um, temporally, or you can turn it all into one single layer. But since we have these layers, just like in Illustrator, it's nice to keep the layers so that you can organize them and you have a sense of visual hierarchy or hierarchy. Um, you can place objects at their original position. You always want to have that selected so it imports and it doesn't move them around. You can also set the stage to the size of the Illustrator artboard. Now, in most cases, the Illustrator artboard is going to be gargantuan compared to the size that's uh, you have of your stage. So normally I recommend not doing this. In this case, this is much bigger than 1632 by 1011 is much bigger than most monitors, so we're not going to do that. All right, let's hit OK. Ta-da! Okay, so what we have here is a... Um, we, we brought in our Illustrator stuff. Sorry, what we have is a mess, really, but we brought in our Illustrator files and as you can see, they're much bigger than the stage. <coughs> Excuse me, but we've got them in. Now, without deselecting anything, let's go to the arrow tool, which is shortcuts V, and I highly recommend you learn shortcuts because they're really helpful. Um, and actually, I was wrong. In Illustrator, you'd use the arrow tool to resize this, right? In Flash, you use the free transform tool, letter Q. It's two below the arrow tool. Let's click on that. And notice everything that's selected now, it has this um, free transform box around it. What you want to do is you want to hold down the shift key, click from a corner, and drag. If you hold down the alt key, it'll keep it centered, but we don't necessarily need that. 
We just want to resize this roughly so it almost fits on the stage. All right, let go. Now you can hit the V key, keeping everything selected. I'll zoom in a little so you guys can see what's going on. Keeping everything selected with the arrow tool, let's click on one of the centers of the black buildings and click and drag this down here and try to line this up. All right, and we'll go back to the free transform tool. Whoa, funky. All right, and we will largely center this like this. Now, when we didn't import those clipping masks, what happened was we get all this extraneous stuff around the edges of our map. Obviously, the mapped area is supposed to look basically the same size as the stage now. Like, here's the title, that should be the edge of the map. But we have this stuff going over the edges of our map because we got rid of the clipping masks. We can easily create a mask again to fix this, but right now what we've done is we've imported some Illustrator data and we've resized it to fit our stage. Now, before I go, I want to <coughs> emphasize down here what you see, which we haven't seen before, are a bunch of layers. It brought in the layers from our Illustrator file, just like layers in Illustrator. And notice here on the timeline, basically all of these things fill frame one. What this means is we have one frame. We have a still image of our map. And if we're going to animate it, what we're going to have to do is add more uh, changes, etc., and tween or uh, animate these changes from frame one to frame whatever. But as you can see, the layers, the timeline is actually a layers menu, uh, a layers menu as well as a timeline. So this is where you're going to interact with different layers. Let's lock all these layers right now so we don't accidentally screw something up. And I'll see you in the next video.